Let me paint the picture. Can, can you imagine being involved in a stadium? Come on, Alex, you understand this. Football game. Rocky Mountain is playing in the championship. Hallelujah. Thank you, somebody. And in the stands, y'all, are not those who have never played the game. But according to this text, in the stands are those who played on the same field you played on. And instead of sitting in the stands talking about, well, when I was on the field, this is what I did. They sat in the stands and cheer you on. Because when they were on the field, somebody else was in the stands cheering them on. Give me you, everything else can wait. Give me you, I hope I'm not too late. Lord, give me you, Lord, give me you.
What a joy, what a blessing it is to greet you this morning and to say good morning. Welcome to Great Awakenings, the television ministry of the St. James Missionary Baptist Church here in the city of Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. I'm Dr. James T. Worthy, the pastor of the St. James Church, and as always, we are certainly humbled and honored to have you sharing the next 30 minutes with us. We want to go now into a service that was previously recorded right here in the sanctuary of the St. James Church. And as always, it is my prayer that the word and the music you hear are a source of strength, empowerment, and encouragement to get you through your day. Right now, let's go to church. Oh, to Jesus, I surrender all. To him I freely give. I will love, her, love and trust him in his presence. Daily live. I surrender all. That's all you're saying when you say, Give me you. I surrender all. Chapter 12, verses 1 and 2 is the text. Hallelujah. This is familiar. This is familiar. The writer says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. That's what your Bible says this morning, right? Bless you, beloveds. Be seated in the presence of the Lord. I need about a good 17 minutes. Amen to share what I want to share, and I'm prayerfully, what I share will not only benefit our children, but will speak to the hearts of all of us. This is a awesome time for our children. They've finished another year of school, amen. They are embracing another summer vacation, amen. They're about to eat you out of house and home. And amen. Now, how come I couldn't get an amen on those first two? Shame on y'all. Amen. They've had a good year. Based on the report cards that I have seen, they've had a successful year. And I praise God for those babies that have come with great excitement. Past, I'm going to the next grade next year. It's a wonderful thing. It's been successful. And that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about being successful, not just in education, but I want to share with you how you can be successful in every area of your life. Don't let anybody fool you and don't let people trip you up into thinking that success is what you have, who you know, what you got on your back, what kind of house you live in, how much money in your pocket. Amen, somebody. Because that success is a short success that will quickly fade away. That's an amen moment right there. 
I don't want you to limit your success to just getting from one grade to the next. I don't want you to limit your success to just making it out of one grade and looking forward to August for the next grade. I, I want to tell you that there are some ways that you can be successful in every area of your life. As a matter of fact, the Bible gives you to know, or rather gives all of us to know, that we are designed to be successful. Read the Bible in the book of, in the book of third John, in the epistle, the third epistle of John, verse two, the word of God says, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health. Watch the phrase, even as your soul prospers, which gives me to know that if I'm striving to do the right thing spiritually, then I can easily aspire to re do the right thing and be successful in every other area of our lives. Here's a nugget that I'll share. It's not in my notes, but I'll throw it out there for free. As long as you can keep God first in everything you do, God has a way of blessing all the other areas of life. The word gives me to know that when I seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, when I first seek God and then I seek to do it God's way, he says all the other stuff. Now, one of the things I love about that other things as it's found in King James is whatever you can tie to that word things, Lord have mercy. Jesus said it can be added unto you. Health can be added. Wealth can be added. Spirituality can be added. Every area of your life is designed for you to do great things. But you got to keep God first. Success. Success is often described as power, prosperity, prestige. Many folk look at success as one who simply achieves a goal. But the problem with that, y'all, is that it's dependent upon what your goal is. And many of us, y'all about to get mad at me, we think too low. Amen, somebody. We think too low simply because we think based upon our own ability. See, we somewhere along life's highway, we have forgotten that we can do all things through Christ. I'm talking to somebody. Who gives us strength? Somewhere along life's highway, we've overlooked Galatians chapter 3, verse 20, where the Bible says, Now unto him who is able to do exceeding and abundant above all that you ask or think, y'all ain't ready, according to the power that is already at work in you. See, the problem here is not God, y'all. The problem is me. Because I tried to base God on what I can do. How many of us realize that when you try to base it on what you can do, you're going to miss out on a whole heap of blessing because God is able to do what you can do and then some. I wonder if I got somebody in here who can testify the man is still working miracles. Anybody in this room who can say he's still making ways out of no ways? Have I got somebody in here who can say I can look back over my life the last 24 hours and see something that God did that I know I couldn't have done and since he did it, I want to tell him thank you today. Success, 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 success. Because when you look at the word of God, the word of God gives us a total different view of what success is. And it's found even in this passage that we've chosen as a preaching text for the moment. There are some things right here in these two verses that would give us what I call a standard for success. Those of y'all who need a subject, you know, most, most, you know, good Baptist folk need a text, a subject, and three points. So I've given you the text. Let me give you the subject. The subject simply is a standard for your success, a standard, a standard for your success. Now, here are the three points. Y'all ready for the three points? I'm just about done, believe it or not. Here are the three points. Here are the three points. Point number one, according to this text, if you're going to be successful, always remember your examples. Young people, if you don't hear anything else, hear me, hear me real closely right now. I don't care what you have experienced in this life. Somebody has experienced it before you did. Amen, somebody. As a matter of fact, the Bible gives me to know that there is nothing new under the sun. As a matter of fact, all we're seeing in some cases is a repeat of history. 
History repeats itself over and over again. So the first thing, if you're going to be successful, you got to remember the examples. Now, the question comes to mind, who are the examples? I'm glad you asked. According to Hebrews chapter 12, the examples are actually found in Hebrews chapter 11. And y'all know that Hebrews chapter 11 is the chapter on faith. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtain a good report. Through faith we understand that everything was created by the hand of God. And then it starts listing these different folk. By faith Moses, by faith Enoch, by faith Abraham, by faith this, that, and the other. All of those different folks, what are known as the hallmark of faith, but catch the reality, they did it according to their faith and not their experience. And I want to tell you, you'll never be successful when you sit around always talking about what you did instead of looking to somebody else who's had to walk the path that you have yet to walk. I need to talk to some children. Can I talk to some children here? Please understand, I don't care what you know, there's always somebody who knows some more than you do. You know, maybe I need to talk to a few adults in here and remind a few adults. I don't care what you know, there's always somebody who knows a little bit more than you know. And instead of getting scared or being afraid of those who know a little more than you know, the smart thing to do is to hook up with those folk who know a little bit more than you know and learn from those folk. After all, you can't talk about being a millionaire and all you hang around is broke folk. Ooh, that was good, wasn't it? Preach, pastor, preach. Because here's something successful people do. Successful people hang with folks who are already where they want to be. I'm, I'm right there in the text, y'all. I'm right there in the text. Let me paint the picture. Can, can you imagine being involved in a stadium? Come on, Alex, you understand this. Football game. Rocky Mount is playing in the championship. Hallelujah. Thank you, somebody. And in the stands, y'all, are not those who have never played the game. But according to this text, in the stands are those who played on the same field you played on. And instead of sitting in the stands talking about, well, when I was on the field, this is what I did. They sat in the stands and cheer you on. Because when they were on the field, somebody else was in the stands cheering them on. And I got a problem with some of us good church folk who got so much Holy Ghost and fire that we can't cheer nobody else on when somebody had to pray us through. If you can't say amen, say ouch today. Because I got problems with folk who sit on the sideline and find fault with everybody else. My God, if you can't help them, keep your mouth shut and don't hurt them. Teach, pastor. This race called life, the last thing our children need now are critics. This race called life, the last thing our young people need now are somebody pulling them down because they don't do it the way you did it. This race called, I wish I had somebody to help me here. This race called life, the last thing our children need is somebody sitting with your highfalutin self thinking you have arrived when you still got some growing to do in your own life. No. The writer says he was compassed about with a great crowd of witnesses. In other words, he had some folk who had been where he had yet to go. And I want to tell you, young people, hook up with somebody who's going to push you to your next place. Can I say this like I feel it and y'all won't look at me funny? Find somebody who's going to push you and not pimp you. Find somebody who wants the very best for you and they're going to push you into getting your very best and stop hanging around folk who want to try to get what they can get from you and then when they got what they want from you, they kick you to the curb and act like they don't know you. Am I doing all right this morning? Y'all ain't mad at me yet? 
Because in this race called life, it does get tiresome. Heard a pastor say it this morning, and I'm going to repeat it. There's some times in this race called life, you are going to be in a place that you don't feel like it. Can I be honest with y'all? I know that it is my assignment and my calling to preach God's gospel. But there are some days I don't feel like it. Oh, yeah, I know, I know, I know. You, pastor, yeah, let me flip the script. Because you saved, sanctified, spirit filling, anointed. But let's be honest. There are some days you don't feel like it. And some of y'all don't make me mess with you because some of y'all show it because you won't even show up. But in the race called life, the race is not based upon how I'm feeling at that moment. In the race called life, the goal is the finish line. For you children, the goal may be high school, college, career. For the Christian, the goal ought to be heaven. But here's reality. You don't stop running and going just because you don't feel like it. You got to keep pushing because you know there's a prize waiting for me. That's number one. Point number two. I'm still right there in the text. Say, yeah, thank you. I appreciate that, baby. Thank you, because they ain't saying nothing. <laughs> Even the babies say yes. Out of the mouths of babes and sucklings, y'all. Y'all sitting there looking like I'm preaching pig Latin, and she got the word. Hello? Well, beloved, once again, we have come to the close of another Great Awakenings broadcast. As always, it is my prayer that the word and music you've heard today have been a blessing to your life. So much so that you will want to get up tomorrow morning and make your way to the house of the Lord to worship him in spirit and in truth. In considering where you will worship, please consider my personal invitation to join us right here at the St. James Missionary Baptist Church. St. James Church is located 527 East Thomas Street, just off of Raleigh Boulevard in the city of Rocky Mount. Join us each and every Sunday morning for Sunday morning prayer at 9.30 a.m. Our Sunday school is held each Sunday morning at 9.45 a.m. with classes for all ages. And then our Sunday morning worship experience begins promptly at 11 o'clock a.m. At the present time, our Bible studies are on summer break during the months of June, July, and August. We will resume Bible study in the month of September with our Tuesday night teaching held each Tuesday evening at 7 p.m and our Thursday morning midday Bible study and prayer, which begins at 11.30 a.m. If you're in the Rocky Mount area and desire transportation to our Sunday worship service, all you'll have to do is call our transportation ministry using the information as you see it listed there on the screen. Someone from our administrative office will make contact with you and will arrange pickup with our transportation ministry and they will be found picking you up on Sunday, getting you to church, and returning you safely home at the close of worship. If this broadcast has been a blessing to the point that you desire to have it on CD or DVD for further enrichment and empowerment, our media and technology ministry stands ready to assist you. All you'll have to do is call our church offices using the information as you see it. Please be sure to request the service number as it is listed on the screen as our media and technology ministry will be found serving you at the highest level of excellence. Again, as we come to the close of this time together, I wanna to say as always, good morning to all of those who are viewing the Great Awakenings broadcast in hospitals, nursing homes, convalescent homes, and even in your private sick homes. A very special good morning to the staff and the residents of the Hunter Hill Nursing and Rehabilitation Center here in the city of Rocky Mount. As always, we pray God's continued blessings upon you and that God will continue to keep you in a perfect peace as you keep your mind stayed on Him. Until next Saturday morning, when we have this opportunity again to share the word, the music, and the witness of the St. James Church. I am Pastor James T. Worthy, simply saying, may the blessings of the Lord be with you now, henceforth, and always. God bless.